Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, it's the middle of May, it's the 16th as I'm starting to record this, but by the time you see it, it will be May the 31st um, because it will be uh, time for the big reveal um, for our Inspired By collab. So this time, this is a, this is a quarterly collaboration. Um, there are about 10 of us taking part, but it's open to anyone, any, any of you out there to join in if you would like to. So this time the prompt is to be inspired by you. Create a character inspired by yourself. Doesn't need to look like yourself necessarily, um, but it needs to kind of be inspired by you or represent you in some way and it can be in any medium any format it can be digital if you like it, it it could be a drawing or a painting it doesn't have to be it could be a sculpture it could be a doll it could be um it could be a poem it could be a story it could be uh, a comic strip um a cake <laughs> I think I suggested a scarecrow a couple of weeks ago. Whatever you like, as long as it's something creative and it's a character inspired by yourself. Um, if you would like to join in, you still have a couple of weeks. I will keep on looking until about the middle of June when I'll put together a kind of roundup video and um, and have a look back at what we all came up with and also showcase all of your pieces. So if you would like to do that, post your pictures in on Instagram or Facebook and use the hashtag inspired by art collab all one word. Please, yeah, I'll put it up here as well. Please make sure you spell it correctly because otherwise I won't find it and it'd be a shame to, to miss you and um, because we like to go and have a look at what you've done and like and comment and all that if you do a youtube video it's very exciting a couple of people already have it's only in the middle of may and a couple of people already have done youtube videos for this um hashtags don't seem to work very well not for me anyway on youtube please make sure you also tag me same goes for instagram and, and uh, facebook actually just tag me to be on the safe side to make sure we don't miss it you can also you can go into the arty farty annie group on facebook um i will leave my link tree below where you can so you can find your way there if you would like to or um, what i would recommend is our discord community so it's called arty fartist but it's not all about me it's for all of us and it's becoming a very um lively friendly happy little group in there really happy place to be it, it's all free to join and everything just uh, again if you if you go to my link tree you'll find i think the discord link is right at the top when you go to my link tree um so you can post pick pictures in in any of those places as well in fact in the discord and um, we've got a special room a special gallery for inspired by pieces um so um that's if you would like to join in with us if not just um have a look at what what i'm uh, showing you today and i will also of course i will also leave links to all of my fellow collaborators in the description box below so please go and check out what they're doing i can't wait to see we're a really eclectic mix of artists and artists and makers and um i i'm expecting to see some uh, really exciting uh, projects so uh yeah do check them out what i'm going to do is because my project that i've got in mind is going to be a bit long-winded i'm not going to film the whole thing i'm gonna i'm filming this before i even start and i'm going to um show you what i've got in mind put in a quick picture of how it's turned out in the end and then i'm just going to do some I think photographs are very short films of what I'm doing as I go along and I'll do a voiceover to put it all together because I think otherwise it's going to get daft. Um, so you might remember if you're a regular viewer that a while back I did some trash dolls. Um, now this is something I first did years ago and then did it again recently on my YouTube channel. Um, so let me show you a minute. So this is my blog as it looks at the moment. I don't really blog anymore. The last one was months and months ago. Um, I never really found that people interacted very much on a blog and I do love the interaction that I get on YouTube and in Discord and Instagram. It's, it's what it's all about. You're connecting with people, aren't you? Um, the blog was a lovely way to kind of keep a record almost for myself um, and I would if I had more time I'd probably still do it because it's nice to look back on what you were doing you know I can look back here and think oh that's when we were still living back at the cottage and I used to do that and that's you know but I just I haven't, <laughs> I haven't got time I would I, in some ways it's a shame to let it go because it is a lovely kind of visual record for yourself having a blog even if nobody else ever looks at it I just don't, don't have time so here are the trash dolls 
that I made ages ago. Now, if I think of a click on there, it'll go big. Yes. It's not very great, great quality, but... Um, so these are little dolls that I used to make out of trash, literally out of trash. And that was the first lot, oops, that was the first lot I ever made. Then I made some more just recently. Here are some pictures of those. And so I just used empty boxes, panes, little little empty uh, thread spools and things, all kinds of junk, the kinds of kind of old toot that I that I collect in drawers and things and boxes in my in my craft room. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, this one I did to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, <laughs> Her Majesty here. <laughs> really enjoyed doing that. You can just do so many things. And one of the lovely things about it was that, um, one of the lovely things about it was that um, some of my viewers joined in and made their own trash dolls and put them in the Facebook group. And it was so exciting. There's nothing that it's such a thrill when you sort of come up with an idea like that and you think, oh, and people are just going to think it's weird. <laughs> and then actually people don't think it's weird. Uh, they think it's fun and they have a go and they put their own spin on it. And that's always so exciting to see. Anyway, um, so so there's a video here that I did um, after after that Jubilee one. Um, showing exactly how to make them. So I'll link to this video as well in case you want to have a go at making them yourself. But I'm not going to go through the whole process with this one. I just think it's going to be a bit long-winded because what I'm planning to do for this one, so for this character that's going to represent me, <laughs> I, I have so many different ideas. I always end up with so many different ideas and one was paralysed with indecision, really. Um, but I was wandering around a charity shop just recently and came across this the show very well on there hang on let's put it there came across this so obviously this is meant for putting your jewelry and things like that on um and i got it for like a pound or two in the charity shop and i thought ha, ha, that's what i'm going to base my character on and initially i had all kinds of ideas i was going to make it steampunky i was going to see if i could like prime this this metal cage and um, make it look all kind of rusty and corroded perhaps put cogs in and make it all you know steampunky perhaps cut a hole in the front and make it like a like a cage with a door and put the heart inside i also had this key i'm going to go to the desk now i think that's going to be easier i also had this key that tom 3d printed and kind of sanded down and i love it, it feels really nice actually um which i can paint it will take paint really nicely and make it look kind of old and gnarly and I thought about putting that inside, you know, and being representing the fact that, you know, <laughs> the key to my the key to my happiness, the key to my fulfilment, um, or whatever is is actually inside me, you know. And I was getting I had all kinds of ideas. Um so I, I had all, all kinds of ideas for different ways of representing different parts of myself. Um I thought about making the making a sculpy head. Um, and I and I thought about having it two sided, showing one side of myself and another side of myself, um, all kinds of ideas, and got a bit bogged down trying to kind of include everything about myself, <laughs> and it all got a bit much. So in the end, I thought, right, let's keep it simple, keep it doable, let's make a glorified trash doll with this. So this is going to be like. The biggest most elaborate trash doll i've ever made but nevertheless it's still just a trash doll so let's see some of the things let's go back to the desk again and i'll show you some of the things i'm going to play with oh before i do that because it's easier to show you here i've decided to keep it really simple and i'm going to paint my face on a wooden spoon an old wooden spoon so this is i want to make everything out of recycled items as far as i can i could still do the two-faced thing not that I'm two-faced in that way, but, you know, we all show different sides of ourselves to different people in different situations, don't we? There's a side of me that you see now that's quite sort of outgoing and chatty and, uh, you know, excited <laughs> most of the time. I'm in my happy place. But there's a side of me that's very withdrawn and introverted and can get very depressed and um, hugely lacking in confidence and all those things. And you don't, you know, I don't come across that way on my youtube videos when i'm feeling like i don't make any youtube videos <laughs> but there is always another you know we all have those other sides to ourselves um there's other little things i wanted to include like um let me, let me, i'll go back to the desk again i've just reminded myself of one of the things 
one of the things I'm going to be including. So there are lots of things about myself that I, I want to kind of represent in this. So I, I could do quite a sort of sad, worried looking face on one side and a happy cl clown face on the other. The fact that I used to be a clown and, and in, in my mind, part of me still is a bit of a clown, really. <laughs> I've also got these inbuilt comedy nose and glasses that's going to be included I'm always busy I'm always busy and I flip from one thing to another I want to kind of Im imply kind of uh, the, the butterfly thing or the pinball thing somehow where you, you're going from one thing to another and I also want to show the fact that I do a lot of a lot of different hobbies and things I have a lot of different interests and I thought the way these hooks are I could have two arms on each side, one from each hook, couldn't I? Or even more than one on each hook. <laughs> It'll be like a Swiss Army knife crafter. A Swiss Army crafter. I've got other bits of junk to use. This is the kind of junk that I keep for making models and things with. So these are the coil bindings from, you know, sketchbooks and things. Uh, so I can use them to put things off the top of my head. I've got, in another drawer somewhere, I've got some spent kind of old-fashioned looking light bulbs those long ones that go like that i quite fancy having a light bulb either in one of my hands or coming out the top of my head to show that kind of constant sparking of ideas that my mind never stops that's an important thing i've got these now this is a magnetic butterfly thing it ended up in a toot drawer <laughs> Uh, when I say to it doesn't you know uh, oh to it, it's something I treasure um, and I know I find a good use for now that kind of uh, represents the butterfly part of myself the I want to look at everything try everything go everywhere do everything <laughs> I'm all over the place I need I can't have a problem settling on one thing at a time quite often it also would represent the fact that um I've always been in my family um I can still remember now my grand saying Oh, she's always she's away with the fairies that girl you know she's a little bit fay that's another thing head in the clouds i might have some clouds coming up off my head as well as the light bulb <laughs> but i thought i could use this butterfly i could turn it into wings so it implies the uh, away with the fairies and uh, and also the butterfly thing quite like that idea toilet roll tubes in there oh there's this lovely scooby-doo i call it scooby-doo stuff um diane sent me this uh, so I've, I've kept that because I think that'd be really useful for this kind of thing. And I've got these tubes, I, I scrounged them from work. They're the, well, they would just get thrown away. They're the till, the middle of till rolls. Um, and I thought, well, these would make good bases for the arms and possibly legs as well. So I was going to do them out of clay, but I thought, well, let's just make it a trash doll and make it as as far as possible make it out of trash in all of the hands i want different things so one hand i'll have a paintbrush one i'll have a spoon so i love cooking and things as well i've got old paintbrushes that are a bit gnarly from me treating them badly but i haven't thrown away because they're good for glue so i'll use one of them but then i've got to have like you know knitting needle and crochet ne crochet needles and scissors so i might make myself a little bit like edward scissor hands where my hands are actually made of the scissors well i haven't got actual hands at all they're just you know that's the basis of my idea. So here, I'm going to show you a picture of how it turns out. <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball and I could see what you're seeing now. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that turned out brilliantly and I'm really pleased with it. <laughs> this isn't everything that I'm going to use. I've got I've got beads stashed away that I might use. I've got pieces of fabric that I might use. I want to make a, I want to make it really colourful because I love colour. I want my hair to be pink because I love to have pink hair. But I'll probably do the plaits and wire them. I want stripy legs and uh, big feet in funny shoes. That's that's the kind of idea that I've got in my head. I have got big feet. From, I'm very short, but I've got big head and big feet. I'm sure I was meant to be taller. I wouldn't be so fat then. <laughs> I don't blow over easily in the wind. So my next job now, um, I've already been going on way longer than I meant to, um, but this is just the intro. <laughs> I'm going to take my wooden spoon and um, 
give it a bit of a sand i might see if i can dig out some proper sandpaper if i can be bothered or i'll just use this this emery board that'll probably be good enough then i'm going to give it a coat of, of this acrylic gesso and then i can paint the face on um, and i think i'll make the glasses up out of wire so they're three-dimensional i'm really now i've decided what i'm doing and i'm just going to make it an easy fun trash doll i'm really excited to get going on this so here you can see I'm uh, putting a base coat of a sort of pale pinky colour acrylic paint on here um, just to give me an, a nice surface to, to work onto and I'm sketching out a rough face. I've got a sort of a finger stall thing there I'm going to use as a nose so I keep holding that up just to see what it's going to look like. Having a bit of a test of the hair, <laughs> just get an idea of where I want the features to go. And then I'm using uh, just coloured pencils, um, polychromos and um, uh, Prismacolor pencils mostly there to um, colour in the features. Now I'm just trimming down that little um, finger stool <laughs> for for my uh, my kind of clown style nose, and I used hot glue to stick that on. And now I'm moving on to the hair. So I've got these coloured pipe cleaners that I'm using as a kind of base, and I'm going to use felting wool to kind of felt onto those pipe cleaners. So I've put my uh, leather finger protectors on there because <laughs> those needles are sharp, and I'm just using what it's it's like a three needle tool i've got there because it's a bit quicker than using one with just just the one needle um so i've just anchored it in the middle where the parting would go and then again where the where my plaits are going to start <laughs> and then i've just off camera i've just plaited that all together and i'm using hot glue there because it's fast and easy and strong um <laughs> and i'm just using that too glue the hair onto that wooden spoon easy peasy of course because the pipe cleaners are in that hair i can bend the plaits into whatever shape i like i've taken my glasses and my, my my other pair of glasses there and i'm um just drawing out the shape and this is like a template i'm going to use wire now to bend around the shape of that template that i've drawn <laughs> And then once I'm, I'm happy with it, I've just used some black tape around it to secure it all together and make it the right colour. Because I used a green kind of, just a florist wire. And now I had this, um, I think it's meant to go on a wine bottle. It was a present from a friend. Um, and I, I just cut it up the middle. I'm going to use that to um, add patches of fabric to I'll show you later to make a sort of colourful coat and now there's those till roll middles I was showing you before I'm going to wrap them in paper and use them to create the arms and legs um, and for the bottom half of the legs I wanted it to look like stripy black and white socks so I just used this uh, um, an alcohol marker there a permanent marker to make stripes on the white side of that paper and I'm just rolling it round and then using a bit of um, PVA glue just to um, just to secure that and then a little trim a little sort of black braid around the bottom of, of the where the uh, wrists would be and the top of the stockings <laughs> and I've got some of this ribbon that came in a bizarre pack I think I've just ribbon I've had knocking around I've made a couple of little bows there and these, though, there's I've I've done a prototype hand first. Um, I just did it with pipe cleaners. So um, now I've got the hang of it. I'm going to show you the second hand. So I'm just I just looped one pipe cleaner over, and then I've cut the other pipe cleaners in half, and twisted them around to create um, the four fingers, and then the thumb a little bit lower down, just to get the rough hand shape to start off. And then the rest of that first pipe cleaner that I bent in half, I'm using that, I'm wrapping that round and around in between the fingers to secure everything together. And then once I was happy with it, I've now got a kind of vaguely flesh colour wool 
that I'm just I've, I've just winding it round and round the hand to pad it all out, anchor it all together, and obviously um, add add um, a more appropriate colour. <laughs> um, finishing all that off with a with PVA glue. And there's, those are the sort of things, the, the things I'm going to put in the hands at the end. And there's the two finished, two finished hands. I'm now rubbing in a bit of that same paint that I used on the wooden spoon, and finishing off with a layer of PVA glue that I'm rubbing in to just make sure everything stays together. Um, allow me to shape it a little bit. And there we are. I've I've put every, I've wired everything together and hung the arms off of those hooks and I wired the legs onto the sort of cage part, the skirt, the bottom of the skirt. And I'm just getting everything ready there to start on the little coat. I've really enjoyed doing this coat. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would, which is why I'm ending up recording this so last minute. Um, I'm kind of doing it almost like I do a Kawandi, really. Um, I'm starting at the edges and um, just adding pieces one by one and working in towards the middle. Um, I found it quite handy. I used a little uh, sticky glue stick, <laughs> a little fabric glue stick to um, anchor the pieces on roughly where I wanted them to be. The fiddliest bit was what I'm showing you now where going around under the armholes and things like that, I had to just cut little pieces of fabric, little triangular pieces of fabric and stitch them on as I went. I just overlapped them in a kind of crazy patchwork fashion. And I'm just putting little straight running stitches through them. And then later on, um, I'll go back in with embroidery of thread and add more stitches, more colourful stitches. And even though it's finished now, I kind of feel like I want to go back in and do a bit more embroidery on it. <laughs> I've sort of had an idea I'd like to make myself a waistcoat or something using this kind of method. I'd maybe have to make it a bit tidier, you know, but and yeah, once after I'd, after I'd got around the um, armholey bits, um, it was much more straightforward. So you can see now I'm just going around the the more straightforward parts, placing out my pieces there. Yeah. Oh, here we are. Now, now I'm finished. I've sewn my daisy on the front. I've put bias binding around the edges to tidy it all up just a little bit, but not too much. I just need to get her dressed now and she's all done. Well, my little mini me is all done. And there she is. That's going to be a little home for now. You can see that uh, since I started this video, there's a lot less stuff on that table. I've had my big craft room clear out as well. So... <laughs> <laughs> looks a bit different in here um, I'm going to put in here a picture I've just taken a photo um, so you can see a bit better um, unfortunately I'm finishing this so late at night just the night before I finally finished her and um, so I haven't got I'm not able to take a photo in daylight so I'm going to put a photo in here And and uh, and I will um, I'll take some photos tomorrow as well and put them on Instagram and in the Facebook group and and our Discord community as well. So please uh, feel free to have a go yourself at this um, challenge if you would like to. And um, don't and if you do, don't forget to um, use the hashtag inspired by art collab so that we can find you you could also post your pieces in the arty farty annie facebook group or in our discord community i'll put my link tree in the description um, so that you can find your way there and of course most importantly i will put links to all of my fellow collaborators there are about 10 of us this time um, and we're just such an eclectic bunch we have very different styles and favorite media to use so I, as always i will really look forward to seeing what my fellow collaborators have come up with and in fact by the time this video is uploaded i will be glued to the screen <laughs> waiting to see what everyone else has done okay uh thank you very much for joining me this this is I, I feel a bit disjointed because i've recorded this video in so many pieces so i apologize if i've repeated myself or left things out <laughs> because it's quite hard to keep track of and there's been a lot of water under the bridge since uh, 
since I started this a couple of weeks ago. So I'm very happy with how my arty party Annie turned out um, and I can't wait to see what everyone else does with this with this prompt. It's been a really fun one. Um, okay, thank you very much for joining me and I will see you again really soon. Bye. <laughs> Try and couple all this together now into a coherent video. <laughs>